um, coming back into the center core area, there was a stretcher that, that came in from the hallway uh, with a body on it. It was being rushed toward one of the trauma rooms. I went with the stretcher into trauma room one. I recall that the patient had a bullet wound in the front uh, above the, the right uh, collarbone slightly to the right of the, the center neck. We started to get his uh, shirt off, the back of his head uh, above the base of the skull uh, contained a large cavity, which appeared to be an ugly wound, uh, a lot of tissue showing, a lot of uh, blood in the area on the head. The wound appeared big enough for both fists to go into. Uh, both doubled up fists uh, could, could fit into the area. Uh, I remember after getting a shirt off, the IVs bottles were prepared, uh, tracheotomy tray was prepared, the uh, blood was drawn for type and cross match, uh, and uh, vital signs were taken. I remember at the time the patient had a pulse and had, was breathing. I don't remember blood pressure uh, count, although it was being taken. I remember there was noise in the room. It was difficult. The person taking it was saying it was difficult to hear. The um, at this time, the, the uh, tracheotomy uh, incision was made after some comment that there would have to be a new incision made, that the, the hole that was present, which appeared to be a bullet hole, was not in the right location to be used uh, for the tracheotomy. I remember Dr. Jim Carrico making an incision and getting ready to put in the trach tube itself when Dr. Perry opened the door into trauma room one with his hip. His hands were uh, held up as though he were had just scrubbed for surgery or uh, was working on another patient in some way. He said to the people in the room at the time, you do know that's President Kennedy you're working on, don't you? As I remember it, everything, everyone stopped what they were doing for just a few seconds, probably one to two seconds, perhaps three. Uh, Dr. Perry walked up to the patient and put the tracheotomy tube in. At that point, we were all aware um, of who the patient was. At this time, uh, I took a tube of blood over to the uh, blood bank for type and cross match. I gave it to a lab technician who said to me, as he broke it into the trash can, I, it doesn't, it's not a label tube. It doesn't matter whose blood it is. I rushed back to the trauma room one, got another tube of blood that had been drawn from the president, put his name on it and ran back to the blood bank um, and the blood was turned in for type and cross. With uh, the time sequence in being gone from the room was probably not more than um, 90 to 90 seconds to 120 seconds. Uh, after returning the second time, there did not seem to be anything else that I could do that would help to uh, promote the welfare of the patient other than being in the way. Both times when I left the room, I saw Mrs. Kennedy standing across the hall with her back to trauma room two, facing trauma room one. Uh, I, did, I do not recall seeing in the immediate area of trauma room one any policemen or Secret Service people. I went to, uh, into the general area of uh, emergency room to see if there were other patients who needed assistance. I stopped and spoke with one lady. As I recall, she was a miscarriage case, but I could be mistaken about that. She was um, in need of no assistance at all. I made sure that the curtain was pulled so that she had privacy and couldn't see what was going on in the hallways. Uh, at this point, I went to an elevator uh, going back up to the first floor. Donna Schloss also reappeared shortly before I went through the door toward the elevator, and we both were going to go upstairs. Beside the elevator, uh, against the wall, the side of the wall that the elevator was on. There was a stretcher containing dirty sheets, which were bloody, and there was um, a bullet that appeared to be a dirty brass, in uh, brassy yellow in color, short as I remember it, uh, on the stretcher, on the metal stretcher next to the mattress. Donna and I, as I remember, Donna and I both saw this. We both made a comment at the time that it didn't belong did not belong there. Neither one of us touched it, neither one of us changed the sheets or cleaned up the stretcher. We went upstairs, 
and uh, proceeded to a classroom where the uh, emergency room entrance could be seen from the windows.